Do you ever get booed? Any like no, rough the, bombs like that? Um, no, one time I was in Philly and uh, there, was some, there was a place called the Laugh House in Philly and it was a black room on South Street. And it was a cool room and I did, my buddy's like, hey, if you want to go down, they'll give you like five minutes. And uh, I mean, I'm sorry, if you want to go down, they'll give you 150 bucks and you do like 15 minutes, right? You like, you co-headline or something. So I go down and it goes great. Black audience goes great. Then he's like, hey man, they want you back like the next month. It's like 150 bucks again. You go down, you co-headline. So I get down there and it's packed and they're tired and they're tired mm. and there's so many comics go on. And then this one guy who was a monster comic. I don't know if he, if he passed away, if he did rest his soul. His name was Sugar Bear. <laughs> he was really fucking, really funny, like a monster comic. I don't, I, he might have passed if he did, if he did rest his soul. But he goes on. And I go, man, this has been long. He goes on and he does like 20 something and kills, but they start to really get tired. He gets off and he goes, dude, now they're tired. So then I go on stage and I'll never forget this. I go on stage. It was actually, I did a lot of high pressure, all black rooms where I could be booed. And this was the word out of all of, and I did it for many years and it went well. So this one didn't hurt me that much, but it still sucked because, but I get on and I go, Hey man, yeah, I go, dude, I just got back from Kansas and this one. This one black woman in the audience just goes, why? <laughs> and I remember going, this is going to suck. And dude, I was up there and like people would just like a cup, like it was so late, like two people would just get up and leave. And then a couple other people would get up and leave. And a couple other people would get up and leave. And by the time I was done, I was like half the room. And I was just like, and they paid me and said, thank you. And I just remember being like, fuck, fuck. And, uh, you know, that, that'll stay with you. But there, you know, it was, there was no booing. It was just like, oh, okay. it wasn't like, fuck, you're not fun. I think it was just like, all right, they're just putting people on. I'm tired. He's not killing the room the way, you know, I would stay. And, and it was one of those things, but I've, I've had really amazing experiences in, in rooms like that, urban rooms and stuff. Of course. Yeah, white rooms wouldn't put you up. Of course. Yeah. And anytime like a joke works in one room, but not like the other, then like I would get rid of it just cause we want to be able to entertain as many people as possible, you know, but there's a lot of I don't, in comedy there can be like a lot of politics and things like that and think what I'm so inspired about with like what's happening at all things comedy is it's like four comics by comics run and there's producing opportunities for comedians and it's so cool now more than ever to see that there aren't the gatekeepers as much you know like trying to suck up to this booker or trying to get in with yeah. this club or that club which I was never able to do but that seems like all those things are out of your control and if you focus on what you can control that's where you're going to get most of your opportunities yeah that's true and 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 it's it's definitely let you realize how silly it was to put that much stock uh, in those people I put eight years into that you know yeah like, people oh. oh my god I hope they like me oh that person that never did this oh that person <laughs> that never did fucking stand up ever oh that person that loves their power and loves to make you feel like if you're funny or not and now they don't have that you know it's almost like they gotta fucking stand down it's like a it's like a hard ass general that now has to stand down <laughs> and it's, you know what I mean it's like it's like stand the fuck you don't have that anymore and it's cool it's cool because it lets you know that not only was it silly but like it, it, like here's the other thing too it's like it's silly because if that person loses their job and then it's another gatekeeper then it's just another, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same person. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's like that person, oh yeah, did you hear now Greg does it. Oh shit, Greg's my fucking, <laughs> yeah, Greg got hit by a train, dude. Now it's Susan. Dude, I got it. Susan's got to like me. Yeah. Susan pushed Greg in front of a train. Now it's her job. Yeah, yeah. Susan got shot in the face. Oh my God, who's her replacement? I don't know. Let me go find it. And it was, and it's all these people that don't matter. And, uh -huh. and, 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 and I think COVID made people realize that. I think that, that, that YouTube and all that made yeah. people realize that. It just doesn't matter. Things that you think are a big deal aren't. Just get stage time and get better. All you do is get stage time and get better. That's it. Get fucking better. Write more jokes. Be more honest. Get stage experience. And you're going to fucking murder and then murder and then murder. And people are going to see it and go, this person belongs in this room. And that's it. Funny, just get just get undeniable, as they say. I think that's what Barry Katz said. Yeah, it, no, undeniable. But it's, it's, that's the word everybody uses, and it's right. Just because you can't fuck with that. Yeah. You can't fuck with that. Yeah, f that, that's the thing is whenever whenever I'm feeling a certain way and then I see someone like you work and I was like, oh, there's so much more to do in terms of like just the just to see you effortlessly perform for 75 minutes. And I'm just like watching it just like it's like inspiring, but it's also a little disheartening of like, oh, my gosh, there's so much more. 
to uh, like learn and do like as a comedian, you know, it's like, it, it's like a never ending Rubik's cube, which is what I love about it. But it's, it's just inspiring to be around comics at your level and hope like learn a little bit here and there, but realize, you know, there's over 400 interviews here and comics reach out to me every day. Like, Oh, this episode helped me. And I learned this joke writing technique, but the number one advice is to get on stage. Every comedian that's been on here, the number one advice has been, you got to get on stage, learn yeah. it all, but you've really got to get on stage and put it into action. Thanks for watching hot breath. The verse. If you enjoyed this clip, subscribe to see our 400 plus comedy interviews and check out this playlist of our most popular clips.